Good evening. Tonight, tonight, a lorry driver from Hampshire who killed a mother and three children while using his mobile phone is starting a 10-year jail sentence. The crash happened on the A34 at East Ilsley in August. The family was involved in an eight-car pile-up on the notorious stretch of dual carriageway. Mel Bloor reports. Captured on camera, Thomas Croker is recorded changing music on his mobile phone just seconds before ploughing into stationary traffic. We've chosen to freeze the footage before the moment of impact. The harrowing images taken from the lorry's dash cam were shown to the victim's families in court today. Some chose to leave rather than relive the horrors. 30-year-old Thomas Croker from Andover admitted causing the deaths of Tracy Houghton, her two sons Josh and Ethan, and Mrs Houghton's partner's daughter Amy Goldsmith. Speaking outside court today, Amy's mother said the 10-year sentence does not do justice to the crime committed. To all intents and purposes, Mr Croker's use of his mobile phone whilst driving turned his lorry into a lethal weapon. Our children lost their lives because of the reckless actions of Thomas Croker. Tracy Houghton and her family were travelling back from a camping trip in two cars at the time of the crash. Her partner Mark Goldsmith was in the vehicle behind her with his son. Both witnessed what happened. The court was told the car in which Mrs Houghton and the three children were in was pushed under a lorry in front of them, compressing it to a third of its normal size. And that Croker, who was driving at 50 miles per hour, was so distracted by his phone that he barely looked up for almost a kilometre. Passing sentence, the judge said his attention had been so poor he might as well have had his eyes closed. In court, the judge, Mrs Justice McGowan, highlighted a number of aggravating factors in the case. One of those being that before Thomas Croker headed out in his lorry on the day of the collision, he'd been asked by his employer to sign a form saying he would not use a handheld mobile phone whilst driving. That form was signed less than an hour before the crash. A further five people were injured that day, including Adam Pearson, who suffered multiple rib fractures and a broken back. Today, he called for the maximum sentence for dangerous driving to be increased. It's hard to believe, really, that 14 years could possibly be sufficient for the deaths of four people. Because you simply do the maths and you, the amount of sentence time per victim is, is far too low. For the victims' families, no sentence will adequately reflect the pain and loss they feel. They only hope this case will lead to greater awareness of the lethal consequences of using a phone at the wheel. Mel Bloor, ITV News, Reading. A school in West Sussex that was badly damaged by fire during the summer is welcoming students back. For the first time since the blaze, all 450 students were together again at Selsey Academy. Richard Jones reports. Since their school was devastated by fire in August, students from Selsey Academy have been taught in four different locations, including the town hall, a leisure park and another school eight miles away. We were having less time in lessons, obviously we only saw them once a week and there was a lot of travel time involved. We were able to do science there, proper science as in we, we could do practicals, simple practicals and we worked with the high school for that and we are very grateful for that. Now all the students will be together in a newly constructed village of temporary classrooms on the academy site. It opens for the first time tomorrow. We have all of the students on site all together all of the time, which is the biggest difference for us. But in terms of facilities, we will have uh, science labs, food technology space, ICT rooms, uh, a canteen. So all of those things that will make us uh, functioning here on our site at the Academy. Today, students and their parents got the chance to visit the new classrooms. Many were impressed by how much the school has managed to achieve in such a short time. I think it's absolutely amazing and the school has pulled off a miracle. It really is a phoenix from the ashes. It's really good I and mean, obviously the first half term was difficult for them, just been temporary porter cabins but we knew this was coming and just to have a look around today it looks brilliant, it looks really good and I think they'll have a really good experience here won't you? Yep. Can't wait to go to school here. I can't wait for tomorrow. 
So how temporary is temporary? How long will the school be in these buildings? Contracts for the building of a new school are out for tender now. If all goes to plan, it should open on this site by Easter 2018. Richard Jones, ITV News, Selsey. People travelling to the Isle of Wight face disruption over the next three days while work is carried out at the White Link ferry terminal in Portsmouth. It's being closed for essential piling work, part of a plan which will see £45 million invested in a new ship and port improvements. We're doing major development for passengers at, uh, at the port here. Um, we do need to uh, change our service a little bit to allow that to happen just for three days. Uh, it'll all be worth it and uh, we'll have a fabulous new port and then in 2018 a fabulous new ship. I mean, I've been in and out of the international terminal before and I don't imagine that'll cause a great deal of inconvenience. I don't think it makes any difference to me at all, actually. It's fine. I have to travel on the ferry anyway, so yeah, it's no problem at all. I spoke with people over the last few weeks at the terminal. They let me know exactly what was going on and I was able to plan my trip accordingly. I don't think it makes a lot of difference to us. It'll be fine. If you get on off any quicker, great. Hopefully we can get on back onto the motorway system earlier. The headquarters of East Sussex County Council at Lewis was evacuated this morning after a fire broke out. 30 firefighters were called to the blaze on St Anne's Crescent. The building has since reopened. Employees of BMW are being canvassed about potential industrial action. The, the company owns Rolls-Royce, which is based at Goodwood. The dispute is over pension changes. Hindu business owners met in Southampton last night for a traditional ceremony, which is part of Diwali celebrations. The occasion, called Chopda Pujan, marks the end of the financial year. Now, Southampton is marking the end of another very successful Black History Month. This October and for the last 12 years, the city has put together a calendar of events to commemorate the achievements of black people. Sangeeta went to meet its founder, Don John. 1988 in an anti-racism march through Southampton. A protest in support of two men who were refused a drink in their local because of the colour of their skin. One of the barred men pictured here was Don John. It's probably the last anti-racist protest in Southampton. And it was a consequence of um, uh, myself and a friend of mine going to a, a public bar uh, in Southampton and being refused uh, uh, drinks there because it was argued that other black people had been there before and had caused some trouble and therefore he was banning all black people from the pub. It was called the Royal Oak in Portswood. And uh, the consequence of that was that people then started to protest and argue about uh, that this should not be so, and it ended up with a march that went all through Southampton. The picture features in a collection put together by Don. Another image shows early days at the Southampton Council for Racial Equality. The now defunct organisation helped hundreds of new arrivals for over three decades. Older photos are a chance to look back at Southampton's evolution. The newer ones, taken by Don himself, though, have a different aim. I think historically uh, black people don't have a great control over the images that are very often represent who they are. And uh, this was a really good opportunity to put this collection together. The collection is called Humans of Southampton. And as Black History Month ends, Don hopes his pictures will play a small part reminding people, whoever we are, there's a lot more that unites us. Well, let's have a look at the weather forecast now. With the details, here's Martin Stew. From sleet to the slopes, driving through Europe, Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Hello again. Well, it was a suitably spooky start to today with a mist and fog around, but as Halloween days have gone, actually, it has been pretty bright and very mild. Things are changing, though, because tomorrow it gets colder and that's how it stays for the end of the week. Out there tonight, well, a fair bit of cloud around, not too chilly. We are going to start to see a bit of mist and fog building just towards dawn. Temperature-wise, well, holding up in double figures in some places like Southampton. So similar temperatures, really, to what we saw last night. That mist and fog actually thickening slightly through tomorrow morning. Relatively poor visibility, particularly on the coast. It will slowly lift and by about 10 or 11 it's then replaced by blanket cloud. Quite a dull day. It is though going to be dry. The main thing we'll notice 
is it going to be feeling cold? We've got this wind coming down from the north, bringing in quite a chilly breeze. So temperatures feeling about four or five degrees lower than they have done today. And as we look towards the end of the week, well, things are staying relatively chilly. A very nice day on Wednesday, plenty of sunshine around, but fresher and cooler. More cloud on Thursday and Friday, and nighttime temperatures getting chillier too. The risk of quite a widespread frost. Good night. Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Well, that's it for now. We'll be back during Good Morning Britain from 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Join us if you can. But from the late team here, have a very good night. Bye-bye.